If you don't have ideas, read. If you have ideas, but can't articulate them, write. If you have ideas and the clarity to execute, build. Expand, organize, and focus your mind. You've probably seen this animation style all over Instagram. It's the signature look of Dan Ko, and this specific video hit nearly 34 million views. But how do you actually build it? I spent hours reverse engineering every single frame. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to recreate this viral animation from scratch using Fusion. Let's dive in. Start by adding a background node and connecting it to media. Change the color to an off-white tone. Add a polygon mask. Create the first point, then hold shift to draw a perfect straight line. Set the border style to flat and increase the border width to add thickness. If we rotate now, the line pivots from the center of the screen. We don't want that. Select the polygon mask, hold M, and move the pivot to the bottom of the line, slightly above the edge. Go to frame 30 and add a keyframe for Z rotation. Move forward 10 frames and rotate 90 degrees. Open the spline editor, smooth the keyframes, and increase the easing for a clean opening motion. Duplicate the polygon mask. At the last keyframe, set the rotation to negative 90. Move the X position to create spacing between the two covers. Now the book cover animation is complete. Copy the border width value. Add a new polygon mask and draw the base of the book. Paste the same border width and align it with the covers. Go to frame 30 when the covers are open and align the base so the thickness and edges visually match the covers. And that's the result for now. If you like the progress so far, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more. Add another polygon mask to create the first page. Use the same process, but with a thinner border. At frame 30, add a keyframe for the page shape. Move 15 frames forward and adjust the shape to create the bending animation. If the movement feels slow, Open the spline graph, select all keyframes, and press S to smooth them. You can also open the keyframe tab and bring the keyframes closer together to make the animation faster. Duplicate the page mask twice. Offset their X positions and adjust the shape at the final frame. Do the same for the last page. Adjust the X center and modify the shape. Then select all three page nodes and open the keyframe tab to fine tune the timing. In the keyframes tab, add a slight delay between the pages. This creates a natural staggered motion. Now we're going to add a rectangle mask and make sure it's placed after all the polygon masks. In the inspector, set the paint mode to subtract. Go to frame 24 and position the mask so it fully covers the book. Then add a keyframe. Move 10 frames forward and reveal the entire book. Smooth the animation in the spline editor, and now we have the fade in for the book. Now let's fix the scale of the book by adding a transform node after the background to adjust the size and position. And that's everything for the image setup. Next, let's organize the node tree. Select all the book nodes, add an underlay, and rename it to keep everything clean. Now, to, to create the ball, copy the background node we used for the color and connect it to the output of the merge node. This will create a new merge node. Add an ellipse mask, disable solid, and increase the border width. In the width field, type an equal sign to create an expression and link the width to the height so one slider controls the ball size. At frame 1, set the height to 0 and add keyframes for both height and center. At frame 30, raise the ball by adjusting the Y center and increase the height to set the final ball size. Then smooth the animation in the spline editor just like we always do. Next, add a transform node for the impact animation. I'm not using the ellipse mask for this part, so we can keep the motion clean and easy to control. Move to frame 28 and add a keyframe for the ball position. Move 10 frames forward and place the ball so it hits the page. Right now, I felt the book looked much bigger than the ball, so I scaled it down using the same transform node we added earlier. And like I always say, this part depends on your eye. Learn the animation style and how things move. Don't copy every step exactly. To create realistic movement, smooth the keyframes. Objects lose force at the peak, so softer easing gives you more natural physics. And don't forget to smooth the graph animation in the spline tab as well. For the page reaction, save the original page shape by setting a keyframe. Then, one frame after the impact, adjust the shape to show the ball hitting it. Repeat this for all the pages you have. And for the final touch here, make sure the ball actually makes contact with the page. When I was editing the video, I realized the page was closing and the ball was hitting too close to it. So I went back to the project file, opened the keyframe tab, selected all three page nodes, and made the animation faster. I think this looks better. Anyway, now for the page flip, select the last page node. Click in the viewer and hold M to move the pivot point down to the bottom of the line. 
At frame 50, add a keyframe for the rotation. Move 10 frames forward and rotate the page until it touches the opposite cover. Adjust the page shape if needed to make it look natural. Then go back two frames, change the pivot point for the next page and add keyframes for both rotation and shape. Move 10 frames forward again. Flip the page toward the other cover and adjust the shape as well. Repeat the same steps for the last page and, and finally for the book cover. All right, that's the result for now. So let's move on to animating the ball. Add a new transform node at frame 50 and keyframe the ball's center. At frame 60, move the ball to the opposite side. At frame 70, bring it back and at frame 80, move it again. Now select all the keyframes from the viewer and convert the straight line graph into a sine wave curve, just like I'm doing. This gives the ball a natural bounce. And of course, after every animation pass, go into the spline tab and smooth the motion. Next, if you notice, the ball gets slightly shorter when it falls and that small detail really helps the realism. To do that, select the ellipse mask and remove the width expression. Match the first two width keyframes to the same value as the height. At frame 50, lower the height a bit, and at frame 60, bring it back to normal. Then smooth all the keyframes. Now for the light ball effect, copy the ellipse mask and paste it as an instance. Now de-instance the solid border width. After that, enable the solid checkbox and reset the border width, then de-instance level controls as well. At frame 48, set the level to zero and add a keyframe. Move 20 frames forward and raise it to one. After that, add a glow effect. I'm using the Neo Glow from the Neo package and you can download it with 10% off using the link in the description. Set the glow radius to zero, add a keyframe, then increase it 20 frames later and reduce it again after another 20 frames. Now add a new transform node after the ball nodes to continue the animation. I'll skip this part since it's the same process we've done before. For the morph animation, add a new transform node to the book group. At the impact frame, add a keyframe for the angle. Five frames later, rotate the book 180 degrees. Make sure to move the pivot to the center of the book before rotating. Go back two frames, copy the background node and paste it into the workspace. Connect it to the output of the merge node to create a new merge. Add a polygon mask and draw a split line, just like I'm doing. Select the first merge node and animate the opacity from one to zero in one frame. For the second merge node, do the opposite from zero to one. This way, one fades out while the other fades in. Now for the ball again, I used another transform node. This time I made the keyframe line have a sharp edge to create realistic reflections when the ball hits the wall. Next, to make the rectangle effect, replace the polygon mask with a rectangle mask. Adjust the height, width, and position to match the line shape. At the moment of impact, add a keyframe for the ball's height and center. 20 frames later, disable solid, increase the border width, and adjust the dimensions again. For the spline graph, this time I'll select all the keyframes, right-click and choose Ease Outback Cubic, and that gives us the final motion for this part. Now, go to around frame 44 and add a keyframe for width. Then move 10 frames forward and increase the value to prepare it for the text effect. Next, for the white box flash, I actually use the same method we applied earlier for the circle, so you already know how to do that. Just make sure to bring the level back down to zero so you get that clean flash effect. Now for the text effect. Start by creating a line using a background node with a polygon mask and add some border width. For the animation, keyframe the length and set it to zero. Then move 20 frames forward and return it to one. And don't forget to smooth the animation in the spline panel. After that, duplicate this line twice and adjust the final length value so you end up with three different line lengths. Now add a duplicate node, increase the copies to four and adjust the Y position and the time offset. This will create the scrolling text effect. And that completes the full recreation of the Danko's book animation inside DaVinci Resolve. The next part follows the exact same system we've been using so far, so I'll stop here. Use this structure as inspiration and build your own unique style on top of it.